283 for one. The fifth highest total in the history of men's T20Is. The second highest in men's T20Is between full member nations. The only higher one being India's 297 just last month against Bangladesh. And it was fueled by Sanju Samson and Tilak Varma. They absolutely bossed it in the bull ring. A sumptuous century for Samson, a thumping one for Tilak, providing only the third instance of two centuries in an innings in men's T20Is, but the first by a full member team. The two of them stitched a 210-run association. Yes, there was a 73-run stand from 5.5 overs to start the innings, but poor Abhishek Sharma will be left as a footnote from this record-breaking effort because Samson and Tilak, 210 not out in 14.1 overs, the first double-century stand for India in men's T20Is and the sixth-highest partnership of all time in the format. Yes, all of it did really happen. Those two centurions and Varun Chakravarti become the biggest winners from the 70 20Is India have played recently, South Africa and Bangladesh. These two series were a chance for the non-regulars to start presenting a case for themselves to be part of India's regular T20I setup and these three have made themselves counted. Samson with quite a binary outing in South Africa, hundreds or ducks. But three centuries in the last five outings now, only behind Rohit Sharma and Surya Kumar Yadav in India's all-time T20I centurions. Tilak Varma was the player of the series and you'd argue rightly so. Impressive cameo in the first game and then two centuries, back-to-back -back hundreds of varying nature. Really measured and matured in the 30 20i and then absolute madness in the fourth. On the bowling front, no one's made a louder shout than Varun Chakravarti. He had been quite effective in the home T20i's against Bangladesh and now in this series, picked up at least two wickets in every outing. You could argue his best outing actually came in the losing cause, that stunning Pfeiffer which ran through the South African middle order. So Varun Chakravarti, really impressive return to the Indian T20I setup. A shout out to Ravi Bishnoi who was also quietly effective. Five wickets in this series, but most impressively an economy of 7.3, the most economical bowler on either side in what was quite a high scoring series. From a South African perspective, really not much to write home about apart from Marco Janssen. He's marked his comeback series with uh, impressive outings with the ball, an economy of 7.4 and it only really reached the sevens with his last over of the series which went for 20 in Joburg. But also 102 runs making him the second highest run getter for South Africa in this series which is perhaps a good indicator of the kind of troubles their batters had throughout this contest. Only Tristan Stubbs finished with more runs than Janssen for South Africa, but his strike rate wasn't what you usually associate with Stubbs. And if you look at the rest of their batting lineup, Hendricks, Rickleton, Markram, Klaassen, Miller, the highest run tally for any of those batters was 72. So really no runs for the South African batting blades. And the biggest cause of concern perhaps is Aidan Markram, the captain who led them to a T20 World Cup final, has individually had a year to forget, finishes 2024 with less than 250 runs at an average of 15 and a strike rate below 120. And finally, what a year for India in men's T20Is. They finished 2024 with 26 games and 24 wins, comfortably the best win-loss ratio any team has enjoyed in a calendar year in the format. They went through an entire World Cup unbeaten to finally end their T20 drought of 17 years. But what's most remarkable is the transformation. This is a team who, through the last two T20 World Cups and those World Cup cycles, had really found itself in such a rut with respect to its approach and its intent. Those were big subjects of debate. All that has been transformed radically this year. India topped 200 nine times. No team has ever come close in a calendar year, not just in T20Is, but in all men's T20s. And by the end of the year, they'd actually almost touched 300 twice. Such was the upscale that India had. Uh, it also meant a year run rate of 9.55. Now, before 2024, no team has ever topped nine and a half runs per over in a calendar year in men's T20Is with a minimum of 15 games played. Only Australia in this year have bettered India's mark of 9.55. All of this for a side which appeared to be in a different age till just a few years ago is honestly the most remarkable reset you can think of.